15, 18. Read. Then said he, Unto what is the kingdom of Yahweh like, and whereunto shall I resemble it? What is the kingdom of Yahweh like? And is there anything that resembles it that I know about? Is there anything in my experience that I can compare the kingdom of Yahweh to it? That's the big question. Unto what is the kingdom of Yahweh like? What shall I think about in my life experience that resembles the kingdom of Yahweh? In verse 20, read. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of Yahweh? Now in verse 18, he gave an answer in verse 19, read. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast it into his garden, and it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. See, he said, now you've all seen birds. You've all seen mustard seed. You've all seen a man. You've all seen a garden. And you've all seen gardens grow. You've all seen a tree, and you've all seen fowls of the air, and you've all seen branches of trees. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. That's what the kingdom of Yahweh is like. So in verse 20, he, everybody threw their hands up. Hey, what you trying to say? <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. You must not have understood my question. I mean, I heard what you said, but hey. I don't understand an answer like that. About no mustard seeds and a man and a garden and trees and fowls and branches growing and lodging and stuff. I mean, wait a minute. I asked you about the kingdom of Yahweh. What is it like? And you chose some things I know about, but I can't figure that out. It's a mystery to me. I can't understand how the, that compares to the kingdom of Yahweh. So in verse 20, he said again, but uh, what shall... I say the kingdom of Yahweh is life. What shall I liken unto the kingdom of Yahweh? What shall I compare? So then he gave him another easy answer. One of those parables, an allegory, a metaphor, and a simile. He gave him another allegory, metaphor, and a simile. And, and the answer was, read. It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was left. And then verse 22, he left them. He went <laughs> through the cities and villages. <laughs> they didn't understand the first parable and they didn't understand the second one either. You didn't understand the first one and you didn't understand the second one. I understand all of them. There was a time when I didn't understand any of them. I read them all just like you. Who was more blind than me? But no man taught me to see it. And yet I see it. So that testifies to you that I must have met somebody you didn't meet. I must have come in contact with someone that you didn't come in contact with.
And since no man on earth taught me these explanations, I'm telling you who taught me. Yahweh, my father, Yahweh taught me. I'm telling you who taught me. The answer to all of these parables, these metaphors, allegories, and similes. So in this modern day and time, 80% of our people are functionally illiterate. Yes, sir. Those graduating from high schools around the country are 80% functionally illiterate. 30 years ago, our people may have gone to the third grade, but they could read. Today, you go to the 12th grade, they still can't read. They put you out of school and you don't know what leaven is to this day. <laughs> he made you hate books. The white man made us hate books. So all he had to do was hide the secrets in the books. And we'll walk around forever blind. And when we pick up the book, we run across an allegory of all things. What in the world is an allegory? Then we run into a metaphor. Oh, wow. What is a metaphor? Then we run into similes. Oh, Yahweh. And I didn't know a parable was an allegory, metaphor, and a simile. I didn't know that. I didn't know what leaven is. And if you tell me that leaven is yeast, what does that have to do with heaven? I put yeast in bread and it makes bread rise and most of our young women, anybody under 20, don't know what that means. It may be safe to say anybody under 30. You never made a loaf of bread in your life. How many sisters never made a loaf of bread in your life from scratch? Stand, Stand up. up. All sisters never made a loaf of bread from scratch. See? Everybody. It's not just 30, but some 40 haven't made any. Never. Look around. And that means all of you standing, which is most of you, don't know what in the world yeast does. You don't know when to put yeast in bread. Thank you, baby. Now, our grandmothers all knew what yeast did. All of our great-grandmothers made bread. That's the only way they ever got bread, was make it. Some of us didn't know what it was to go to school without a pan of biscuits made in the morning. Mama got up and made biscuits at 5 in the morning. She was up every morning at 5 o'clock. When we woke up, we smelled coffee in the house. You smell coffee in the house. And biscuits cooking. And some bacon strips were somewhere. You would have thought the world had come to an end if you didn't wake up with some coffee smelling in the house. How many know what I'm talking about? So when you come along in your Bible and read about the kingdom of Yahweh is like leaven. See, he didn't even call it yeast. <laughs> Knowing we hate books, we're not going to go get a, uh, a dictionary and look up no leaven. It's like leaven. And then, then those of you who want to be sophisticated. And you're sitting up in Bible class in Sunday school and you read this and you really want to sound intelligent. You may try to fool everybody like you know what it means. The kingdom of Yahweh, it is like a leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. Till the whole was leaven. That's what the kingdom of Yahweh is like. 
Does everybody understand? All of you, my students, do you understand? Good. Now, we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> Uh, but Sunday school teacher, I don't understand what Levin is. Look, kids, you're trying to be smart, you'd be going to hell. Don't be like, just wait a minute. I'll see you after class. In the meantime, it's all about what is the kingdom of Yahweh like. Let's go to Matthew 16. Again, to recapitulate, Matthew 16, 27, 28, read. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Praise Yahweh. That's not past tense. There are some standing here. And there were some standing here who are now standing out there as hypocrites. You will not taste death until you see the Son Yahweh coming in his kingdom. Isn't that awesome? The Son Yahweh shall come in his own glory. In his own glory. Y'all didn't read it? In the glory of his Father. The Son Yahweh is not coming in his own glory. But I'm coming in the glory of my Father. With my angels. And you that accept Yahweh as God and me as his son are my angels. You that love Yahweh and his son Yahweh are the angels of Yahweh. And then the son of almighty God Yahweh has the power to reward every one of you according to your works. Notice you got the work. It didn't say you could believe. It says you must work. It doesn't say you will be rewarded for believing. You will be rewarded according to your work in Yahweh's kingdom. Your work. Are you working? It's not a matter of is somebody else working. Are you working? It's not how somebody else's work looks. It's not a matter of whether you're working harder than somebody else is on the same job. The other person will be rewarded for their work. And you will be rewarded for your work. And the Son, Yahweh, has the power to reward every one of you according to your works. You must work. You must work in Yahweh's kingdom. To believe is not enough. We're not building Yahweh's kingdom through believers. We believe in, we're building Yahweh's kingdom through workers. And those of us that love Yahweh do good work. Nobody has to come and hunt for us to work. We hunt work. When we have a good understanding, we hunt work. When our understanding is bad, work hunts us. Work 
If we work, work will have to find us. You have to come and look for me work before I will work. But those of us that love Yahweh with a pure heart love to work in Yahweh's kingdom. Now the next part of this verse, the kingdom of Yahweh is all about working. You see? And getting a reward for that work. And you can see in this verse that you are not working for the white man, you are working for Yahweh. You're working with the sun. Because the one who has the power to pay you your reward is the son who comes in the glory of his father. Can you see it? The son of man, Yahweh, shall come. He's coming. Is come. In the glory of his father, who is God Almighty, with his angels. And the kingdom of Yahweh is where the son Yahweh has the power to reward every man according to how he works in Yahweh's kingdom. But there will be some standing around right here. There will be some standing here among us who don't believe in working in Yahweh's kingdom. They don't believe in the reward that the son Yahweh has the power to give. They can't see the kingdom of Yahweh. They don't see the son of Yahweh in his kingdom. They still believe the white man has the power. There's some standing here today like that. And they don't believe it's going to take place in their lifetime. They say, I believe Yahweh is God. Yeah. I, I, I believe you're the servant of Yahweh, uh, master teacher of these things. I believe all that. But I don't believe it's going to happen in my lifetime. White man is still electing presidents and governors and legislators. Army is still fighting wars and losing and things, but they're still doing it. Got bombs going all out in space. Now those standing here, and they can't look ahead and see the son Yahweh in his kingdom. They don't understand the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Yahweh and how it works. They don't understand that you work your way into it. And we get a reward for that work. And there'll be some standing here in our midst that just can't see. They have a veil over their face until this day. They cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. They can't see the son Yahweh coming in his kingdom. But the word says, you shall not taste of death. You're not even going to be able to die. Even if you look for death, death shall flee from you. You're going to be made to see the Son Yahweh coming in His kingdom. It's His. The books say His kingdom. In the glory of His Father. And it's His kingdom. It's the Son Yahweh's kingdom.
let's go to Matthew 20. What is the kingdom of Yahweh like? Matthew 20. Read verse 23. Read. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. If you're standing here and can't see it, you better turn to Yahweh because it is his to give to you. You who become a part of my kingdom must understand that it shall be given to you for whom it is prepared by my father Yahweh. You are now allowed to drink of my cup of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh and be baptized with the truth that I am baptized with. You're able now to be baptized with the Spirit of Yahweh as I am baptized with the Spirit of Yahweh. But when it comes to where you sit, it's already prepared for you by Yahweh. It's already prepared, prepared for you by Yahweh. I'm coming in his glory and the kingdom of Yahweh is my kingdom. It belongs to me. Now you have to make a choice. And you who are having a hard time making the choice, get your reward from white people. But you shall see the son Yahweh coming in his kingdom. If you open your eyes, you can see something happening now. <laughs> Glory. Yahweh's name is ancient. And that's the name that I'm glorifying all over. You cannot be mistaken about whose name I'm glorifying. And the word says that I would come in the glory of my father with my angels. I'm doing what the word said I would do. Now if you're standing here and still can't see me coming in my kingdom, you shall not taste death till you see it. So you're still going to have to face me concerning your works. Mm. You're not going to be able to die until you see me coming in my kingdom and then you're going to have to be rewarded by me according to your work. In my kingdom. What's your pleasure? That's what the parable of the leaven is all about. What's your pleasure? It's about loving Yahweh. With all of our minds, heart, soul, and body. It's about loving Yahweh. It's not about our ego trip. It's about loving Yahweh and loving each other. And I love you so much. Now you notice here in verse 23 that my kingdom is a gift to you. And this gift is prepared for you by my father Yahweh. It is my gift and I am a gift to you. It's my kingdom and I am a gift to you. 
I am the son that's born, the child that is born to you, and I'm the son that is given, and I have a kingdom. So since I am your gift, then my kingdom is also a gift to you. How was it prepared? I was prepared by my father. Now you understand the mystery. My kingdom is given to you, but my kingdom comes with me. See, the books say, I come in my kingdom in Matthew 16, 27, 28. I come in my kingdom. So me and my kingdom come together. You can't separate me from my kingdom. I don't care anything about anybody else's kingdom. I come with my kingdom in the glory of my father, Yahweh, as a gift to you prepared by my father. I am prepared. And I have the power to reward you according to your work. Well, the scripture is so wonderful and clear. How many understand it clearly tonight? That's what the kingdom of Yahweh is all about. Understanding who the gift is.